You know, I just found out why so many youngsters, uh, so few youngsters take up the xylophone. It's not they can't play it, they can't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fellow who can spell it, and he could play it too. Roger Ray, Roger! <laughs> I know, I know exactly how you feel. As soon as you see this instrument rolled out, you hate me. <laughs> be as quiet as possible and get off as soon as I can. If I look a little weak, a little poop this evening, forgive me, I spent the whole morning at the country club. And I don't play golf, I drink. <laughs> see, when you go out to a bar and get drunk, you're a drunk. But when you get drunk at the country club, you're a sport. <laughs> But my dad, my dad's the one that helped me with my drinking problem. He and I got along very well. I, I had a, a relationship with my father, bar none. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, I, that, I, uh, that I'm a long distance swimmer, would you? Swim 14 miles with ease, and I owe it all to dad. Remember, he used to take me out in Lake Michigan in a rowboat. <laughs> he'd row me out about 14 miles when I wasn't looking, he'd throw me overboard, and he'd row away and leave me out there to swim back to shore by myself. <laughs> swim back wasn't so hard, it was getting out of that burlap sack. Uh, thank you. Uh, please, I've got to do a 45 minutes uh, act in five minutes. Uh, I have a selection now of two numbers. Please notice very carefully, if you will, that one number will follow the other because it's almost an impossibility to play both numbers at the same time. <laughs> It'd be funny if they shaved Castro and he turned out to be Batista. <laughs> I don't think I'll make it. <laughs> Here's a very beautiful number I'd like to play for you uh, from the operetta Rosemary, a number called Indian Love Call, written and based on a great sad Indian love story. It was back to many, many years ago by the waters of the Minnetonka that lived an old Indian chief who had a very handsome young son that was very much in love with the daughter of an, another Indian chief who was always hoped that one day these two kids would sort of get married and carry on the traditions of the tribe. But because of an argument during a canasta game one day, the <laughs> two tribes decided to go to war, separating the two lovers. The daughter was taken to live on one cliff, the son was taken to live on another cliff. And between the two, the lie a deep past canyon with a raging river at the bottom. Consequently, he could never get to she, she could never get to he because of the slippery rocks. <laughs> See, that's what I like about this job. I come out here, I don't bother you, you don't bother me. <laughs> Sad part of this story was, if you happen to know this Indian boy, you could have probably come back to the edge of the cliff with him as he did day after day, year in, year out. He'd stand there morning and night. Rain, sleet, or snow, bare-chested moccasins, loincloth, feather. <laughs> looked across this great canyon to his loved one who'd stand on the other side looking back to him. And he knew in his heart that nothing could ever come of the great and beautiful love. He knew, <laughs> he knew that he could never hold her again as long as he ever lived, and tears would roll down his cheeks as he sang this very beautiful and sad number called Indian Love Call, which I would like to play for this evening. <laughs> Not at war. <laughs> Shut up.
send us to the peak and then we cut. Note the number, please. Thank you very much. Three years ago, we uh, uh, a little number. I had uh, you probably. Uh, now, kind of the last note, Dr. Standard, the Republicans get in. When the vaudeville audience heard the names George and Gracie, they knew they meant Burns and Allen. 